the house was built or the 1880s for the parents of Juan Luna. So they live here for 11 years because the father of Juan Luna is a tax revenue inspector collector here. But he loses his job in 1861 where the family migrated in that uh, year, that same year, 1861, when the house was accidentally burned. So during the time of the former President Marcos, with the influence of the former First Lady in 1977, the house was restored for 45 days in observance of the 60th birth anniversary of the former President. So it was inaugurated in 1978, so the uh, this house became a national shrine shrine of Wanduna because this house was his birthplace. He was born here October 24, 1857. We cannot see any original meaning here, but at least we have visualization of those works of Wanduna, where we can see the replicas of the, the famous painting, mm. the death of Cleopatra, the Spoliarium, the blood bomba. We can see here also a memorabilia of the brother, the famous uh, general during the Philippine-American War. General Antonio Luna. So let's start with the painting, The Death of Cleopatra. We consider this as the first international first recognition of Juan Luna in 1891. This is a silver medal, the first manifestation of a Filipino. So Juan Luna during that time sold it for 1,000 silver, uh, I think 100 silver pesos to one of the officials of Barcelona during that time. And now the original painting is still in National Museum in Bilbao, Spain. So the actual dimension of the death of Cleopatra is uh, 2.50 meters by 3.40 meters. So unlike those uh, Cleopatra of the European, uh, the death of Cleopatra of Juan Luna is very colorful. Then it also shows conservatism on the painter itself. Because unlike those uh, European Cleopatra, where you can see the breast of the dead Cleopatra in this, uh, the breast of the, de uh, the dead Cleopatra is covered. Then followed in 1883, in that year, is the death of the brother, the great violinist Manuel. The painting, which is this one, is actually a scene happened in the time of uh, Tiberius or Augustus. There were the Caesars of Rome, where after uh, this entertainment during Roman holidays, the dead gladiators were being dragged down to the place. The gloomy room part of the Colosseum, which they called during the time the Spoliarium, where the fallen gladiators were being fed to the lions and tigers. So this painting is the most frightful among the canvases in 1884 National Exposition. So this painting gave Juan Luna the gold medal of his career. So the actual dimension of the, uh, the spoliarium is 4.26 meters by 7.72 meters. It is donated by the Spanish government in 1950s where we can see the original at the National Museum in Manila. So in that year, 1884, Juan Luna was asked by King Alfonso XII and he gave a project to him to paint the Battle of Lepanto. So, Battle of Lepanto was unveiled in 1887, where Juan Luna was invited by Queen Regent Maria Cristina to attend the first session of the Senate, and one seat for the royalties was given to him to honor Juan Luna as a one of the great painter during his time. So, Juan Luna also became a scholar, and he was given subsidy by the Ayuntamiento government in 1886 for 1,000 silver pesos to be able to paint historical canvas for them. And one of these is the Blood Compact. It is, this one is part of our history, the Blood Compact done in Bohol by a two parties, a Filipino chieftain and a Spanish conquistador. So, Rasi Katuna of Bohol, the chieftain of all Tagals, and Miguel Lopez de Legazzi. So they done blood compact, so they drop blood to the wine and they mix it and they interchange. So this kind of uh, uh, blood compact, sometimes they call it Kasi Kasi custom, which is a drinking wine ceremony during that time. So this is also a gold medal of Juan Luna in the exposition, located now at the Malacanang Palace in Manila.
So, very interesting about this painting, one Luna used models for the two guys, Rasi Katuna and Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. So, Rasi Katuna skill was modeled by our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. Mm. So, he dressed like this. So, the arm, actual arm of our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. And this Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, his brother-in-law, Dr. Mm. Trinidad Pardo de Tamera. So, Juan Luna is not only a painter, he was also a designer. Yeah, actually, he was the one who designed the uniform of the, the Philippine Revolution. So, this one is a revo uh, revolutionary uniform used by the high ranking officers during that time. So, this is the memorabilia of the brother, General Antonio Luna. So, the famous, the greatest Filipino general of the Philippine-American War. Both brothers studied at Ateneo de Municipal de Manila. They had their own course. So General Antonio Luna finished his Bachelor of Arts there. Then he transferred to UST. He took his preparatory pharmacies. Then again, he transferred to Europe. He took his licensure at the University of Mar Barcelona and his Doctor of Pharmacy the Central University of Madrid. He joined different organizations, just like the La Solidaridad, where he asked Dr. Jose Rizal to be the leader of La Solidaridad during that time. Then Antonio Luna also, uh, one of the founders of La Independencia Filipina, which is a, a newspaper of the uh, revolution. He also established a school, which they called during the time La Sala de Armas, where he became a fencing partner of his brother, Juan Luna, Dr. Jose Rizal, and other guys during that time. So those brothers, three, actually three siblings of the Luna Uino Bisho died same year 1899. So the Mariana Luna died of malaria at the age of 44. In Pampanga, he was, she was only 44 years old. Then in Paulo Dilman, June 5, 1899, General Antonio Luna was assassinated in Cabanan Upan, Nueva Ecija. So, Juan Luna died in Hong Kong, December 7, 1899, of heart attack at the age of 42.